Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays, where it's now time for our weekly update on uh, Factorio with Crestorio 2 and Space Exploration. So, as you can see here from all this red stuff around, I'm back out, on, or still out, on, I should say, on the Vulcanite planet, where I've been uh, actually now starting to make some actual, real, genuine Vulcanite. So, things are going things are going well. Last, last stream, you'll have seen that down here I just about started planning out my uh, power systems, and... The bots are still working on these because there's a lot of stuff that goes into all of this and actually they're struggling because I don't have enough yellow chests. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, the problem is we're building up enormous quantities of stone because when you're building on um, on volcanic planets you tend to have enormous quantities of stone around. So whenever you build anything the bots pick up huge amounts of stone and huge amounts of coal and then they try and store that somewhere and often there isn't really room for it. So if I take all the stone and coal out of... Oops, there's a load more stone and more stone and more stone. If we try and take all the stone out of these uh, chests and put them in, in, in different chests somewhere else just to, sort of, just to get, get rid of it and get it out of, the, um, out of the way of the logistics system then this will give everything a bit more, a bit more space to play and, we can, uh, and everything can start to work again. Um, there's some gaps in there now. There's a lot of stone down here. As you see, so you can see, you can see what I mean by we're creating a lot of stone. Now, one of the things we could potentially do with all this stone is uh, ship it all back to Norvis in the form of glass, and that's something that we're going to be doing with all of the stone that's uh, that's produced <coughs> as an excess by all of the um, uh, as part of the um, production for the uh, vulcanite. But at the moment, there's only sort of so much of it we can we can deal with. So let's, let, there we go. That, that's freed things up a little bit. The problem is there's still quite a lot of stuff in this. Um, in, in this uh, landing pad here, and a lot of that's being, un and then so it's, it's struggling to unload it all into these chests down here. So if we look in these, you can see these are all filling up with rocket sections, uh, which isn't really what's meant, to, what, what they're meant to be used for. Uh, so it's not ideal. But gradually, as we sort of, as as we uh, hopefully work through all of this, we'll be able to get, we'll be able to get everything out and and and, and have everything start working. There we go. We finally emptied the uh, the. Um, the the, uh, the rocket landing pad. So yes, now we've got all the bits and pieces out here. The bots can fly around. They can do the actual building work they're supposed to be doing. And eventually, we'll have all of the all of this power area built up all the way across here. Now there's a load of flashing stuff in the middle here. That's because we've got all of this um, uh, unneeded stuff for for the, uh, for the for pollution cleaning. Because on this planet there aren't any biters, so we don't actually care about the pollution on it. So none of this is needed. We can just go, I can just go through and delete all of this completely and it won't, it won't cause any problems. Um, because, as I say, there are no biters to be upset by the pollution. So I'm quite happy just letting that sort of blow out and, well, we seem to, I seem to have managed to pollute the entire planet already. Although some of it's drifting off the sides into space, so, you know, I guess we're getting rid of it that way. Um, but yeah, there's no trees on, there's basically no trees on this planet, so there's nothing to absorb the pollution. So it's just, get, it's just getting produced, uh, produced by the, uh, by the system, by all of my factory here, and then released out into the, uh, into the, uh, off the sides of the planet, into space apparently, which is a little bit weird, but we'll, we'll go with that. Why, why, why not? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so what we've been, what I've been up to on this planet is I've gone out and all of these, um, all of these core mining patches, all core core seams, have now got a core mining drill on them. And my original plan was to start training everything around. So I've got it down here. I've got a, a station hooked up to this oil um, patch. So we're digging up oil. We fill up. We've more or less filled up these tanks. A train can come out here, oops, and grab the oil whenever it's needed, and then bring it round to up here where it is actually needed. I was going to then run railway lines out to the more distant, certainly to the more distant core patches. Um, however, unfortunately, I then realised I hadn't brought enough railway line with me, so I've not done that, and instead I've just used belts like this. So we've got all of these mining drills around here. They're running at about 30% um, of their normal productivity level because there's 10 of them on the planet. That's sort of to be expected. It's, it's, it's inevitable. But the more of them you put in, the more core fragments you'll get. So they're all then bimbling along here, down these belts, onto a sort of Sent more central belts, and then actually we're not using it up as fast as. See what I mean? Run out of run out of rail. We're not using it up as fast as we're digging it up, which is um, a bit of an oversight and something I'm going to need to fix next time, because this is all then brought over to here from all of them uh, into here where we are crushing this, and we seem to have run into. Oh, that's an interesting problem to have. Oh yeah, no, of course, right, yes, um, yeah. So we're running in, into the problem here, where the um, the core fragments are building up because um, because of some issues I'll get into in a moment. But the idea is, you bring in the vulcanite core fragments here, you crush them down in the um, in in the in the pulverizers to get out the vulcanite and some stone and the actual and and then normal vanilla core fragments. 
The vulcanite ore is then passed, stripped out over here and processed into, into the actual uh, vulcanite. But also we've got, we've got a bit of a problem here. So the problem we have here is that the core fragments are being passed out down this belt, which is blocked up completely, then down into here where they are processed down. So they're pulverized here and turned into all of the, all of the, sort of the, the stuff that core fragments turn into, which is basically a little bit of nearly everything. And then the rest of this system is Mark's cunning design for produce for turning core fragments into um, into delivery cannon capsules. So all of this basically culminates in this one assembly machine here that's building delivery cannon capsules and then passing them out down this belt. The problem is there are some there's some there's some overflow outputs from this. So it produces too much um, too much. Rare, me rare metal ore produces too much stone and it produces too much uranium and it doesn't know what to do with any of those so what I need to do down here is put in a warehouse here to hold all the excess and I want to use another um, loader on that just to fill it up very very quickly like that and then I can put in a, a um, in an inserter here like this and, and that will then um, hopefully pass all the stuff over into here that's needed. So this is at the moment, this is just being used as a buffer to take all of this rare metal out that's being that's being backed up along here because there's, there's far too much of it um, being being produced and we haven't been dealing with it properly. So at the moment this is acting as a buffer. This will fill up, but, over, but I believe we've done the maths and I did a bit of sort of empirical testing as well that shows that once this system gets running properly that the um, it should be okay. We should be able to ship out the rare metals and the and the stone in the form of glass as quickly as it's being produced from the number of delivery cannon capsules that are coming out of here. Now we do at the moment have an obscene amount of stone and sand in this in this warehouse here because I've been dumping it. Every time I pulled pulled up one of these rocks, I've been dumping the stone into here. So there's a huge backlog to get through, but. With the warehouses here, I don't think that's going to matter because it is running slightly faster than it's... Um, it's producing the, the, the delivery cannon capsules slightly faster than they're being used, but only very slightly faster. So now that that's sorted that out, we can come, up back, come back up here and see that all of this system has started running again. So, we've got a supply of the vulcanite ore being brought in over here. The stone is once again being stripped out and taken down to the warehouse there to be dealt with. We're then pulverising that, which turns it into mostly crushed vulcanite. We also get out a little bit of stone, again passed down the chute over here, and a little bit of this enriched vulcanite, the, uh, the slightly shiny ones there. This gets passed into a warehouse. And now, the problem is that you produce these in a ratio of about um, 3 crushed vulcanite to 0.1 enriched, so 30 to 1. Um, and then down here, when you cook it, you require it in a ratio of, um, <coughs> of 5 to 10. So we need significantly more enriched vulcanite than we're producing. So we've got this, this step in the middle here that's doing that's refining it. The way this works is you, it's, a bit, it's a bit like the Coverex process. You pull in 10 crushed vulcanite and one enriched vulcanite, and you put out four of each. And that means you're turning a certain amount of the crushed vulcanite into enriched vulcanite. In fact, it looks like you're turning every two crushed vulcanite can be turned into one enriched vulcanite. Now, you also need sulfur in this as an, as, an, as an additional thing for the process, which is slightly annoying because it was an extra thing I had to make. But sulfur is a thing we have made in the past, so we can deal with that. And that gets passed out along here, and as you can see, the machines gobble it up, the centrifuges gobble it up, and then they spit out the, uh, the, 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 the improved stuff on the other side. Now, what we're, doing, what we're doing here with all the wiring that's going on around here is we're watching what's in this warehouse. And this warehouse contains the crushed uh, vulcanite and the enriched vulcanite, and then I'm trying to very carefully balance it so that everything carries on working. So that's why sometimes it starts, sometimes it stops. At the moment, there's no crushed vulcanite being passed out down here, for example. So if we look up here, the way I'm doing this is if there's less than 3,500 uh, enriched vulcanite, and that's a fairly arbitrary number, it was picked mostly because it was the amount that was in the warehouse at the time, uh, just to get the, uh, just to make sure so I could test things, I could probably reduce that a bit. Then we'll pa then this belt will run, and that means we're passing out the enriched vulcanite from the warehouse and the crushed vulcanite from the warehouse. It goes down the belts over here to be processed, and we've then got a second belt that's controlled in exactly the same way. It comes along here to top this one up because you use up the uh, crushed a lot faster than the than the enriched so you, I kind of wanted to have two belts coming out here like this so that means we've got that means we'll never run out of enriched because there's there's lots of crushed coming in at the top here and we're making sure that we don't we never use up the last of the enriched in, in the system then down here we have a similar thing passing the outputs down here and we're watching the ingredients so we're making sure as long as there's at least 500 enriched vulcanite in here it'll be passed out down here and that means that we'll make sure we can we never ever run out of it so this will this will run to top it up to three and a half thousand this will stop if there's ever if there's ever less than 500 to make sure there's some to go along here to be turned back into into more of the enriched and then here again we're making sure we don't let the crushed vulcanite out unless there's at least a thousand of it in there and that means we get into this sort of pattern where 
eventually we get back up to three and a half thousand let's sort that warehouse three and a half thousand um, enriched in here and then we wait gradually for the crush to fill up and then when that gets to a thousand which it well it's at 700 now eventually that'll get up to a thousand because we're getting quite a lot of it fed in from the top here and a little bit being coming fed back around from the bottom as well eventually that gets up to a thousand and we start to flow the um the crushed vulcanite back out here and it comes along here and it's processed into the in, into the um into the actual vulcanite blocks themselves so and that, that'll run happily keeping this at at a thousand because it, it tends to come out faster than it goes in so it'll be flowing out here at a faster rate than it's going in but it'll trickle it'll well, it potentially can, but it'll it'll be turned on and off just to keep this at a thousand. Then eventually we'll bring the amount of enriched vulcanite below three and a half thousand, and then this side will start to flow again, and this will get the priority because this isn't limited to only a to only running when there's more than a thousand. So, but this will get the priority, so this this area stops again. So it's a bit bursty. If we look at the production graphs, we can and I search for vulcanite and say so look at that one. Um, you can see that. Over time, you get these spikes where it um, it runs for it runs for a moment, and then it stops. To, well, while it waits for some more to while it waits for the enrichment to catch up, then it runs again, then it stops. And this is this is mostly an input problem, I guess. If I had a lot more crushed vulcanite coming in, then it would run a bit faster. But then I'd also need to be enriching more of this. So I think I am this this is is what we describe as a a um, a latency issue, not a throughput issue. So I'm getting out the same amount that I would be getting no matter how I organised this. It's just coming in in fits and bursts rather than as a steady stream. Now at the moment we're using enormous quantities of vulcanite on those vulcanites. So this this delivery cannon is far is working as hard as it possibly can. So the vulcanite is is not building up in this warehouse. But my hope was that eventually we'll get to having we'll have enough vulcanite on Norvis. So this this system will get a chance to calm down every so often and we'll get a bit of build up in here which will smooth out all of the, that spikiness I was talking about earlier but at the moment we're just shipping it out as fast as we possibly can <clears throat> so we have this one is firing it at Norvis where there is a delivery cannon chest that you can just about make out there um, which is then passing it out for other re other things which I shall talk about in tomorrow's video and then we've got another one here that's uh, sorry here that's that's firing it out at a, uh, a delivery cannon chest on Norvis orbit and both of these are linked up to the uh, the delivery cannons and they're watching them for negative numbers so this is these inserters will only run when there is less than zero vulcanite on the signal that's coming from where they're sending it to so as usual we put in a signal saying I want to have a thousand over there by saying minus a thousand and add that to the amount that's available um, and then that's tr transmitted over here. And as long as it's a negative number, we'll be shipping. We'll, we'll carry on shipping it out. Um, and as you can see, the the one that's firing at Norvis orbit has caught up. So there's a bit of a backlog of vulcanite along here. Uh, the one that's firing at Norvis itself has not caught up. Uh, there's we're using so much on Norvis it just can't keep up. So it's that's just sinking all of the vulcanite we can produce at the moment. So at the moment, yes, vulcanite is. It is now being made, which it solves a couple of the problems. So, I mean, I, ne I needed it for um, for the production science. Uh, let's see, science is in here. Production science re straight up requires vulcanite, so I need it for that. And I have a feeling that the machine learning data and the plasma stream might also need... Machine learning data needs thermal... Maybe I don't need it for this one. Um, no, I think I needed cryonite for making the thermofluid. Let's see if I can find that... Uh, no, maybe that's just oil. I can't remember what I needed the cryonite for. I'm sure there was something though. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so somewhere along here, somewhere around here, I definitely needed the. Um, I def yeah, definitely need the vulcanite for for, um, for this. And I think, and I, th I thought the cryonite was needed somewhere as well. Maybe that's for the utility science, the other one of the sciences that we haven't actually we haven't actually researched yet. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see as we get along. But this is now this is now a very important uh, system, as I'm saying, because we need a lot of vulcanite for absolutely everything. So this this is now up and ticking over. It's not running as fast as I would like. We're not getting the um, we're not processing the ores up here particularly quickly. Um, I'll go. I'm, I think my my first plan for next week is going to be to come in and make sure this pulverization system and this pulverization system can run faster, better, stronger bigger just generally get a lot more of this of this vulcanite of this vulcanite core fragments coming through and being dealt with because at the moment we seem to be limited by um, by the amount that's going actually this belt isn't quite full oh there's a couple of pipes missing along here so I need to put in a pipe there and there that'll help a bit I think I need more belts coming along here I need more pulverizers I need more pulverizers over here I just need to make the whole thing bigger and better because at the moment this is the limiting factor is how fast we can process the vulcanite the, the core fragments out um, on how fast the core fragments can be dealt with. Over here, this system is capable of providing the um, the, the uh, delivery cannon capsules much more quickly 
if we can provide the input for, um, input for it. As you can see, this isn't backing up at all. This, this will work quite nicely. So there's a couple of other things I should probably mention. You, you saw me talking about the oil mine earlier, and that's dropping off a supply of oil up here um, at this station, which I can't quite see, this station up here. And that's being turned into petroleum gas, which is being piped off and turned into sulphur. The sulphur is going into the enrichment process down here, as I was telling you earlier. And also we need it for the... Um, Thing, and we need the petroleum gas for, is it this step? Yes, this step. To, making the vulcanite cubes also requires petroleum gas, which is um, a little bit of a faff and means we need to faff around with, with oil on this planet as well, which is a shame because that, that's a limited resource. Um, okay, we have 446,000 uh, crude oil. We're not, getting, we're not exactly getting through it quickly on this planet, but it is, it is a thing that is going to be a concern later. There is another patch up here. There is some coal up here as well, so we can do um, we can do coal liquefaction once we've researched it. Um, but this system doesn't kick out any spare coal. It uses up all of the coal it's producing in order to make uh, the, the, the plastic and the explosives, I think. Yes, explosives down here. So there isn't any spare coal coming out of here, so we can't use that for coal liquefaction, which was one of my early hopes. However, uh, we will be able to potentially use it for... Um, the coal processing up here. Uh, we, we can potentially dig up extra coal from these if we actually if absolutely need it. Uh, we shall see. Now, I am loosely aware that this is this system is capable of producing. Sorry, this this overall system because we've done done the maths and the empirical testing and stuff like that. This system is capable of producing the delivery cannon capsules slightly faster, very very slightly faster than they're being used. Um, so we are going to need to um, eventually have some sort of overspill that deals, deals with the excess delivery cannon capsules. And my plan for that is to have something up here that prioritises passing them down here, but if there's any spares, we'll probably pass them round here and s sneak off any, grab off any um, excess uh, core fragments. Actually, no, let's do that the other way round. Let's take out any excess core fragments and bring them round here to be delivery cannon, but only by any excess delivery cannon. Something like that, anyway, to, to make sure that we, we're never limited by the number of core fragments we can pull in here. Because we can always throw as many core fragments as we want at Norvis. And that's always going to be a horribly, horribly inefficient process. But if we want to use a horribly inefficient process to use up excess materials, that kind of makes sense. And this whole system, if I do that, will be self-contained. So it'll be using excess core fragments that are coming in and using those excess core fragments to make excess uh, delivery cannon capsules. So I think that's going to be okay. It's a little bit wasteful, but I think it's going to be better than trying to do anything else with the uh, with the del delivery cannon capsules. Um, so is that everything to say about this? I think that's most of it. There's there is a bit of um, pyroflux being produced as an excess over here. So we've got up to seventeen thousand of it so far. I am using that down here to um, to cook it, to cook the glass to get slightly more out of the sand. I don't know if that's a good thing. It probably is, given that as as previously mentioned, we seem to have an excess of the. Um, an excess of the delivery cannon capsules being made, so making slightly more glass out of it in, and using up the pyroflux is probably a good thing. Maybe I'll set this one up to use the same sort of recipe. However, one thing we'll note is that there is still an excess in these um, in, in these smelteries over here, and we've got an excess of delivery cannon capsules down here. So, what I should probably do to fix this is get some speed modules, chuck them in in that smeltery and in that smeltery, just to make those go a bit faster. They'll now get through the get through these resources a bit more quickly. We can start shipping out yeah, like that, and oh, turn this one on because apparently it's not turned on. Um, and then this, here we go. We can now start getting rid of the. Um, the, the, the rare metals here, or get rid of the raw metal, or, raw, the raw rare metal ore, and put it into here to cook it into rare metal ingots. Fire them out with the um, delivery cannon, and exa do exactly the same with the glass. And I believe, as I say, that the number of delivery cannons coming out here is going to be sufficient to keep these, keep both of these cannons happy. Uh, the only pro potential problem is, as I said, all of this backed up um, uh, sand in here, but we will. We'll, we'll, we'll work our way through it, see how it goes. There's also lots and lots of spare um, delivery cannon capsules down here. So as you can see, they're, um, th these are backlogging. There's a lot more. These are building up. So eventually, this will backlog all the way back up to here. And we'll start to be able to use these a bit more. And, and more of them will start to go down this way, where we currently feel like we have a bit of a shortage. Um, yes. Oh, no, actually, this is still only just filling up with glass. So... Yeah, this, this system, I think, is basically going to be okay. We will probably be able to catch up with all of the resources we stockpiled. But I'll keep an eye on it while I'm doing all the rest of the upgrades that I've talked about. Yeah, I think that covers everything for this planet. Um, we There is an in, a, a emisite patch up here. There's, um, I think, it's, is that the only one on this planet? 
Yes, there is one tiny... Im no, there's another one up there. Um, there are these raw emocite patches, and I should probably start digging those up and using them for something sensible, um, like shipping them off to Norvis for now, um, because this is a thing... This is a resource that we, we know we're going to need later. At the moment, we know that um, speed module Mark 3s require it, but we haven't started. We haven't really started making those yet, and we know it's going to be needed for lots of the more advanced belts and inserters and things later on. Again, which we haven't really started using yet, but we might. It might be worthwhile to pull up a certain amount of this just to get to get us started, so we've got a bit of a stockpile of it when we start to need it. So I think we might be wise digging this up, but I don't have the stuff with me. I could request another rocket to come out and bring that for me. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I've also set up um, defences for um, umbrella defences here and um, meteor defence here. Now I haven't done this very well um, because these tanks are not filling up because uh, the amount of... I've only, currently only got one boiler producing the steam and the steam is, is then is all being used to power the, um, the umbrella defence here. What I probably want to do with this is hook up the umbrella defence to, uh, to the main electrical network like this so that it's pulling the 10 megawatts base consumption from directly from here rather than from the steam systems that will hopefully allow these tanks to start filling up a little bit um, or maybe not we shall see um, and probably I need to put in a few more boilers to get the steam coming out a little bit quicker so do I ha did I bring more boilers with me I do not know let's put them down and see what happens uh, yes yes I did excellent so I can I can re I can rig up some more boilers along here like this to, to, to produce a bit more steam and then we can hopefully get these tanks to start actually you know filling up properly and, and get and get a bit more steam stockpiled in these tanks so that when we do get the inevitable coronal mass ejection later there'll be enough in here that we'll, we'll be able to provide the power to uh, to block it now this power and the power networks should be separated here so we should never power the base off these ones um yeah, as you can see, there's a distinct shortage of electricity. How, how a substation could be short of power, I'm not quite sure. I think it might be because we're still trying to power the um, this off it. Let's have a look. There's a couple of receivers on this on this network as well. About but data. In, in, anyway, uh, yeah. So at the moment, as you can see, we're not actually we don't seem to be building up any power in here because it's all just getting dumped straight into the um, in, into the umbrella defence, which is a bit of a shame, a bit of a problem. Um, I'll have to. Oh, I didn't put all those pipes down. There we go. Let's put some more down like that. There we go. Now with that fixed, how are we doing? Okay, we now have yes, we now have plenty. We now have more power than we need because still 14 megawatts is being used up by these two, which is a bit of a shame. I didn't really want this to be using the um, using the power from the from the, from the steam battery, but I don't think there's a lot I can do about that. However, these tanks are now starting to gradually fill up. As you can see, we'll, uh, we'll we, it's going to be a very very slow process, but eventually we should be able to fill all of these tanks up, and that will protect against coronal mass ejection. The big question is, are those going to fill up before a coronal mass ejection happens? <laughs> Over here, I just did a straight copy-paste from Tristan's design, which means I've got his um, green inserters along here, which is unfortunate because I didn't, didn't bring any green inserters with me. I'll need to replace those with yellows and probably take that out and put it there instead. Um, hopefully these, these eight guns will be enough to d defend my planet. Uh, we, shall, we shall see how that goes. But yes, that's another thing I need to finish off. There's, as you can see... This, I've got to the point where I've got what I tend to call a proof of concept on this planet. We are shipping out Vulcanite. However, there are a lot of problems that still need to be fixed before I can call this planet done and decide that I'm ready to leave it. Uh, those will be the uh, the two things that are being powered from the wrong place, but ne never mind. Yeah, so it needs to be made faster, it needs to be made safer, and I need to sort of just... Just, just go around and make sure that everything is working properly, and that these these things are being the these these quantities and these are going down, and, and all that sort of stuff. So a little bit of polishing, a little bit of um, of that sort of thing required. So now that I'm um, part way through the video, please make sure you've uh, you've subscribed to the channel because that'd be very much appreciated. It allows me to it, uh, if the channel as the channel grows, I can devote more time to making videos. So there's more time for you to watch. So please make sure more stuff for you to watch. So please make sure you're subscribed. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell anyone else who might be a little, even a little bit interested in Factorio. <laughs> So next, we're now out onto the ice planet. So this is indeed another song of ice and fire. Or fire and ice, I guess, because I looked at mine first. And this will look very, very familiar because it's more or less the same setup. Once again, we've got exactly the same system, pulling in um, core fragments over here, making them into delivery cannon capsules, which are then coming down here. The, different, the big difference here is that we're shipping out cryonite instead, and, and still glass and, and some imosite as well, and, and rare metals, because Tristan's got a little bit further ahead than I have. Um, but the idea here is very, very similar. He's pulling, he's got um, mine, mine, core mining drills on all of the core seams on this planet, digging up cryonite core chunks that are being brought over here, uh, where they're going into these core uh, processing, uh, these um, core 
pulverizers. Those are then, as you can see, being turned into cryonite. He's ripping out the, stripping out the stone here and the uh, the core fragments off there to go off to the other processing system. Then we're crushing the core, the cryonite ore down into cryonite powder and a bit of sand. The sand's being taken off and turned into glass, much like I've been doing. The cryonite powder is then brought down here and mixed with steam in this particular case. So he's presumably got, um, yeah, he's got a boiler here that's pulling in water from goodness knows where. Um, up there's a tank a pipe coming down from up there, so probably there. Um, that water is getting boiled as it turns, uh, sorry, frozen. No, the steam is getting chilled by the cryonite as, it, as the powder is turned into the crystals. Crystals are getting then getting fed down here where they're cooked along with some heavy oil. So that's a that's a, a faff. I'm I'm kind of glad I don't have to deal with heavy oil. Um, <laughs> and made into then made into cryonite rods that are being sh shipped off down a long belt over here that goes up to the to the delivery cans I spoke about earlier. Um, he's also got rocket fuel being done on. Oh, that's so he can escape again at some point once he's finished with all of this. <laughs> so over here he's got the very he he's got the um, the heavy oil heavy oil the heavy oil heavy. Oil processing, yes, as in the the oil processing system that produces more heavy oil than than the than um, it does the other ones. Um, and then he's cracking. So what's he doing here? He's cracking the light oil into petroleum gas. The petroleum is then all being passed in over here to be turned into the uh, the sulfur and whatnot that's required for the um, uh, for all of the um, uh, the delivery cannons. So that's that's quite neat actually. He's been able to pull off the excess uh, light oil and petroleum and turn that into something that can then be turned into the delivery cannon capsule. So uh, yeah, that that's good. And it presumably means that then he's got a massive. He, oh yes, so that means he then doesn't need to probably doesn't need to feel it, feed in additional oil. Now he does have a supply of it available just in case it's required, <clears throat> but he's pumping in the. Um, the, the, the pet petroleum gas from here at, 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 at a higher priority, I guess, to make sure that gets used up first. So, yeah, that's quite a neat system. He's got these in case of emergencies, but basically, we're down here, we're producing the heavy oil that he needs for the uh, for the cryonite processing, and that seems to be going well because that's a, a full tank, and that's a nearly full tank. So, yes, that looks, looks like it's all going very well. Um, I don't think there's very much else to say about this system because he's basically done, I was going to say he's basically done the same as I have, that sort of implies that um, he, I did it first, actually he, he got in and was, was working on this first, although we, I have to say we did finish it more or less the same time, but I think he's been dealing with some other stuff down on, uh, on Norvis, which we'll look at in a moment. We've got the same sort of general power system up here, it's in a slightly different shape, but it's the same same idea, same, same basic design, uh, same basic design for... Um, uh, for coronal mass ejection protection, and he's got, he, but he's also put in his imasite mines over here. So these have, have filled their belts up with, presumably just with imasite crystals or raw imasite or whatever it's called. That stuff. His tanks are about a quarter full, so that's going out, sort of going. He's only again similar to me. He's only, he doesn't have very many boilers filling them up. So I think he was saying that he reckons that if a, if a coronal mass ejection does come here, the tanks probably won't have had time to fill up. So this might need a bit of a tweak. Um, but yeah, his his nice his rather nicely seems to be running seems to be by, by priority running off his um his base rather than his uh rather than this system, which is helpful. Mine's not doing the same, which is somewhat annoying. But um, eh, what can you do? Uh, right, I don't think there's really much more to say about this because this is all very very similar to the system I've got set up. Um, it's just doing it's just doing the cryonite processing instead of the vulcanite processing. So um, if you have any questions, do stick them in the comments. But I believe that's probably going to have covered it. Now Tristan has of course been doing a few other things. So he he did, yes he finished off getting the cryonite rods running up here on Drakit, and he's dealt with dealt with the heavy oil as I said. He's, he's sending the um, so we don't have much of a demand for cryonite yet, as you can, which as you can sort of tell by the fact that these belts have just stopped when they got to the uh, when they get to the uh, delivery cannon so these again we've got one that's firing at Norvis orbit we've got one that's firing at Norvis itself but look if you look at that you can see that we're not actually using it yet which is why this system is um not being not exactly being stress tested should we say um the glass is also being oh, he's also sending that to um to Norvis and to and to Norbit actually that's quite a good idea I should probably do the same with another delivery cannon but um because <clears throat> I think we're probably going to need quite a lot of um, glass on Norvis on in Norbit because that just is always the case Tristan's also been doing some work on Norvis so he's uh solved he, he we, we finally run into the sort of the entirely predictable problem where this chest fills up and then this backs up and this backs up and this causes problems all the way back down here but then actually this is okay because we've got another warehouse here and that's filling in filling up ah so here we go this is how this is how tristan's fixed the problem of of there not being enough um not being enough room in the chests. He split it off between all of these different chests. I mean, it's it's inelegant, but it's absolutely fine. Why he didn't use a red warehouse? I, actually, I do know why. Um, it's because we're not actually building red warehouses anywhere. So, um, I like the pattern of the way these are passed along, though. Um, 
yeah, so he's not actually building. We're not actually building red warehouses anywhere. And because he was doing all this remotely from Dracket, he had to um, he had to just make do with what was already being made on the um, on the buses. But yeah, that'll keep this going for quite a while because we've only got 65. This is probably the fullest 3.7k. Uh, yeah, we've got we've got quite a lot of space in all these chests now. So this this system will run for quite a lot longer. Um, and this is basically just working as a sink for all the excess rare metals we're producing uh, because we basically because we don't know what to do with them. There's just so much so much rare metal ore being produced that it's, it's it's being produced far faster than we can use it so we're essentially just turning it into landfill worst case we might um end up just i don't know filling in one of the lakes inside it, one of these lakes up here or something just to get a bit more space and to use up the uh, landfill that's uh, it's it's a bit crazy that we've got quite so much of it He's fixed the mineral water providing station. That's this one here. Um, I did say I was going to do it. Um, I then apparently didn't. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly what was wrong. Oh, no, no, it wasn't this one. It was the drop-off station over uh, here, 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 here. Where is it? Here. Here, yes, this one. I'd um, I'd not programmed this up properly. Have a look at the last episode if you want to see exactly what I got wrong. But Tristan fixed that for me, so thank you there. <clears throat> and we're now, so that's now the that's the mineral oil that's being shipped out to make the lithium. And he's also pro reprogrammed this station to be a lithium station by the looks of it. So as the lithium trickles out here, it's going into it's going into all these chests. And at the moment we have. 7.3 thousand of it that's not probably not a train load but you know we're producing we're producing it gradually i suspect when i actually need it i'm going to need to massively increase this this system over here um but you know it needs it needs it'll need to be done but that's not going to be too difficult uh, especially if i end up back on norvis while i'm doing stuff we uh oh yes tristan also performed some science namely the science was how many delivery cannon capsules do you have to drop on mike's head before he dies turns out the answer is two um i should probably ask mike what type of armor he was wearing um but it turns out you can survive a direct hit from a um, delivery cannon capsule and it only takes you down to about a, th a third health um provided you're wearing he's probably got modular armor on um or possibly tier one power armor but yeah so um mike was able to survive the first um delivery cannon capsule but not the second one so um <laughs> yes, that was that was entertaining. Um, he's pulled up the forestry, which was oh yes, that was the the area down here somewhere that was producing trees in order presumably to build up this additional yeah. So now we've got lithium and solid and uh, processed fuel being dropped off here. So this is an extension. To, this is basically to put more stuff on the bus. Oh yes, and and Mike wrote something in trees uh, with the uh, the trees from the forestry. So um, <clears throat> please 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 do as requested. <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, so we have another. We have an extension to the um, the, the drop the tr station drop offs for the for the bus, uh, where we can now get the the um, lithium. Oh, so we actually have produced quite a lot of lithium. So not only was there what was in the station that we just looked at, there was also enough to, well, dump into this station and then have it flow out onto the bus over here. Uh, not very far. So it's a train load and a train and a half's worth probably, roughly something like that anyway. So this is this will give us more room for the things we needed on need on the bus but didn't realise we needed. Uh, so like lithium. Although some of this is going to be stuff that's just going to be need, need to be fed into the rocket, um, the, the rocket that goes up into um, into to Norbit over here. So whether we're going to whether we're going to just want to have it run down the entire bus like this, or whether we're going to want to put in another set of stations somewhere over here and i don't know how we'd fit them in maybe they'd maybe they'd fit in where this copper mine is once we finish that copper patch but then we, we're limiting how far we can expand the bus and we don't want to do that so i don't know we'll have to think about that a bit and decide what the best way is i mean we could just go well we'll just transport it all the way down the bus um maybe in the future maybe we'll wait for the future where we have a spaceship port and bring it into that by train or a um or have something else there are there are there are ways we can do it we'll we'll, we'll think about that in the future um but yes this this means that the bus is gradually getting bigger and bigger but these are things we're probably going to need. And we are probably going to need lithium on the bus at some point. I suspect we're going to need to make batteries. There's probably other stuff you use for lithium for. Let's have a quick look. Lithium is used for batteries, as I, as I guessed. Uh, plasma stream, which is what I want it for in space. Oh, you can make electronic components out of it. That's probably going to be a more efficient recipe. So maybe Mike should be doing that for his um, module town. Spoilers, spoilers. I'll tell you about that next time. And I should be using it for where we're making whichever circuit it is that requires it. I think it's red circuits. Um... Yes, red circuits require it as well. So I could do it, use it, use it up here, and that's presumably. So you use three, 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 three. So twelve inputs gets you ten electronic components. Alternatively, you can use six inputs to get you four. So that was twelve to ten or six to four. Um, it's slightly better. Uh, you can also dismantle them, which none of this counts. Yeah, so that one. Twelve, twelve ingredients to ten output. Um, or oh. Or this one, which is even more expensive, so let's not use it. Only requires a, a more advanced machine. Oh, but it does just use stone and plastic and water. So that might, that might be an interesting one to go for in the future. Um, 
But then we've got this one, which, as I say, takes six and spits out four. So I suppose it depends how we feel, how, how we feel about the value of um, lithium compared to the value of the other three. Um, we'll have to we'll have to make some decisions about that later. Um, oh yeah, I was looking at things things you use lithium for, wasn't I? So yes, electronic components, um, proton stream. That's that's going to be happening in space. That's probably going to be happening on the ground. So we'll need some of it for that. But that I don't think will happen on the bus. Um, and you can avoid it. So there's a, these batteries are basically the only other thing we need to really think about for that at the moment. Tristan has also drained from recycling. Where's recycling? Um, he says he's drained heavy oil from recycling, but I don't know where we're actually doing the recycling. Um, it was oh the re the the, the uh, stuff that to be recycled was being put on the bus at one point. Um, there was a belt for it. I don't know where it went or where it goes. Let's let's have a quick investigate at this because I I'm 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 sort of curious now. So here we go. This is the um this is the scrap which is going to be need, need to be recycled. It comes down here. It goes onto this belt here, which flows all the way along here, very very long way, Oop, to here. Goes up, up here, up here, up here, up here. Winds all the way up here. Right. Okay. So we 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 uh, scrap is being recycled here into all of the ores, which makes sense because then they can be chucked into the uh, into the bypass for the um, for the uh, core fragment processing and into the general system up here. So that that makes a lot of sense. Um, but presumably we're producing heavy oil in a quantity we didn't know what to do with it. So now we're passing it over to here to another station where there's going to be very very small amounts of it, but slowly building up. And then when it fil finally fills up, a train can come and grab it and take it over to the big oil processing area over. Somewhere over here, in with the inputs, maybe. Uh, oh, down here. Ah, hey, ah, he's put it in here on my um, with the lithium station. That makes sort of sense, actually. So we can dump. Yeah, the heavy oil can then be dumped out here and pumped into the system over here to be to be used along with absolutely everything else. So it's one of those things where you go and you go, okay, I've got this thing that I need to get. I've, I, <laughs> it's, it's, it's more than that, actually. I've, I started started over. Here, going right. I need to make these substrates. So that, but that, oh, that makes it a byproduct. So we've got all this, um, all this scrap that we need to deal with. So the scrap then gets taken over to a recycling plant, which um, someone else did. I think that was probably Tristan on a previous episode. I, I'm not sure to be honest. Bring it brought up here to be, and then that's processed. And you go, okay, that's great. We get, um, we get all kinds of useful stuff out of this. We get some iron ore, some copper ore, stone, and rare, uh, rare metal, um, raw rare metals. Great. Um, oh, but we also get some. Um, uh, heavy oil produced as well. Well, so I guess we'll have to do something with that. So that then needs to go off to another system, which will then something else which will take it away and deal with that. I mean, yes, we could void it, but that's messy and feels like feels like cheating unless it's absolutely unavoidable, like the ridiculous quantities of uh, mineral water we get down here. Um, this also needs fixing. It's not a problem yet, but this is this pump is going to need to be turned around and wired into these tanks at some point. Um, I should probably I'll put that on the to do list, <laughs> and somebody else will probably do it for me. Yeah, so you've got this sort of th thing where you you have a, a series of series of series of byproducts, and you yak shave your way all the way down it, and eventually you get rid of pretty much all of them. It's a bit like what I was doing with the um, the lithium production, where uh, the lithium produce, where in order to produce the lithium, I needed hydrogen from somewhere, and so I need then I needed to deal with the oxygen that came out of, uh, on top of that, and so on. So. Yeah, I, it's, to an extent, it's quite interesting. As long as you don't get sort of crazy loops and and things get horribly, horribly tangled like they do in Angel's Petrochem, this sort of level of um, <laughs> of byproducts and interdependencies I can I can deal with and cope with. It's not too bad, but there is such a thing as too much of it. Right, I think that's everything I want to say for today. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please come back tomorrow where I shall talk about what Mike and Mark have been up to. Um, they've made some quite big constructions. There's going to be lots to see up there. It's going to be quite impressive. Um, and please come along on Monday for the stream. It starts at 7:30 UK uh, PM UK time. We've had an, we've had our um, hour change now for, um, uh, for going on to winter time. So it's it's an hour later than it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, that threw a few people uh, on Monday this week. Sorry about that. Um, but then also please come along to the Dyson Sphere program stream on uh, Wednesday. That's me as a as a basically as a bit of a beginner playing playing through Dyson Sphere program and, and learning how it goes as I go along. And of course, as you're well aware, because you're watching one right now, there are these update videos at the weekend uh, for for both both of the streams. All right. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to join in with the with the stuff we're talking about uh, and and, uh, and any of the, any sort of future things, then please come come along to the Discord. You can uh, find the link in the in the um, on, on the YouTube channel and. Um, yeah, come along to uh, to jo join in the uh, conversations there. Um, it tends to mostly be uh, centered around Factorio, but we're also doing a read through of the Mistborn series at the moment, and there's just general off-topic chat about other stuff as well. So it's, it's a good, fun place. Uh, so as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to, I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>